So good morning and welcome to this episode of Marketing Guru TV with uh, marketing, our resident marketing guru, Michael Griffiths from mysmallbusinessmarketingguru.com.au. Unfortunately, Michael uh, is here with picture and voice. There's been a bit of a te technical glitch this morning, but uh, nonetheless, you'll be able to uh, get all the great information from him. This is a regular, uh, regular broadcast. Uh, every uh, every Friday uh, every Friday morning Australia time GMT plus nine currently so nine o'clock Sydney time. Michael, good morning. How are you going, mate? Fantastic, Paul, and thank you very much for organising all this and uh, and allowing us to be able to um, share some great insights with uh, other business owners and, and allowing people to, be able to take something away from this morning and and whether they implement it today or over the weekend. Uh, it's all about being able to add value and being able to get people to be able to do some things which will help them grow their business. Fantastic, mate. So tell us, what are we, what are we going to be talking about today? Because these are the idea of these, as, as we know, are just short, sharp uh, bits of information, about 15 minutes long, uh, keep it simple for people to be able to watch on the train, plane, automobile on their way to work or wherever. So what are we going to be talking about today, mate? Yeah, I, I think something which... Um, has, has really sort of exploded and it's exploded in a way that I think people are getting sick of it in, in a particular type of way because it's not being done very well and that's email marketing. So um, when, when we think of email marketing, you're going to have a group of people who cringe thinking, oh, that means I've got an extra 100 emails today that none of them I really want to know about and then you've got other people who will go, oh, that's a fantastic way to get my message out there. It's only a fantastic way to get your message out there if done correctly. And I think that's that's sort of the key here that um, email marketing still is a great tool. Two years ago, it was an unbelievable tool because no one really knew about it. Now today, every person knows about it. And um, unfortunately, 90% 90, 90 of people don't use it correctly. And therefore, that's why we have so many people who cringe when we talk about email marketing. But when you do it correctly, it still has a great effect and a great deal of power. So what does it actually mean by doing it correctly? Um, I'll, I'll use an example as uh, we've just actually sent something. I sent something out this morning at about 7 a.m. Um, to, to be able to let people know of some things that are coming up. So I suppose the first thing that, that you look at when email marketing is all you, if it, all you ever do is send emails out that sell, 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 eventually those people are going to have enough of you and they're going to leave you. So it's how do you find that fine line of still promoting yourself, still staying front of mind, yet not shoving a sales message down someone's throat every single time you communicate with them. Because um, I suppose you sort of go, and, and, and I suppose it's no different, Paul, like you and I are, are, are good friends and if every time I spoke to you or every time we met up and had a beer and I went, Paul, I want you to buy this. Paul, I want you to buy this. Paul, I want you to buy this. Um, eventually, you're probably going to stop taking my call, and eventually, I'm going to go have a beer by myself and not with you. So, yeah, that's about right. yeah, so I think it's a, a good way to actually sort of think about email marketing in that respect. Um, the people who you are who are you are email marketing to are people who are interested in what you have to say, in what your products and services are and you as a person and as a business. So in a way, you've got to actually nurture that relationship that they're wanting to have with you. Um, and if you end up spoiling that relationship, well, there's no quicker way to have no friends rather than having um, a number of people who would be happy to either buy from you or happy to promote you to other people. So there really is that fine line there, and that's the first thing people have got to sort of be thinking about when they use email marketing. The, the next part of um, the email marketing equation is how often you send it. Um, and you're going to have a number of people here again who go, well, I'm only going to send it when I've got something good to say. Well, that might be every year. Um, you've got some other people who say, well, I'm going to send it every single week. Well, if you don't have enough good things to say, every week's going to be too much. So every business is going to be a little bit different to when should they actually be sending out an email marketing campaign. People like us, where we're always running free webinars for, for people who are going to grow their business. Uh, we've, we're always sort of got different events that we think are interesting that we're promoting to, to other people that if they'd like to go, great. If not, not a problem. Um, giving, as an example, um, for, for the unlucky businesses that got hit last week by the new Google um, search engine update, um, we were able to let people know about that nearly three weeks ago. 
and and what changes were being made so that hopefully they were able to, to make some changes and not get so affected. So if you've got a lot to, to be able to add value to, then it makes it very easy to be able to send things out on a weekly basis. If you don't, then uh, you probably should um, put it back in your pocket, so to speak, and sort of just do it every sort of fortnight, three weeks. But to me, everything, it should be done at least monthly. Yeah, great, great advice, mate. Would you, uh, would you agree that um, people reading your email marketing is sort of like them investing in you every time you send them something, if they're prepared to read it and continue to receive your stuff and not hit that unsubscribe button, uh, that's really them just making a further investment in, in, in the relationship and, and saying, listen, I, I, uh, I value what you do. It's a bit like you keep going to the same restaurant and as soon as they serve you a bad meal, you sort of start you take a step back and maybe go somewhere else next time. Yeah, exactly spot on. Um, and I suppose the key there is, look, I receive emails from people which I haven't unsubscribed to yet, but when I see their name, I don't even bother looking at the email. It's, it's just delete because I don't have time because I know the sorts of emails they've sent me in the past. So therefore, I assume, right or wrongly, that they're going to be sending me that sort of email again. And if I don't have time to, to be able to read that or I'm not interested in buying something from them, I just delete it. Eventually, it'll come the day where I'll unsubscribe from it, but um, it's just deleted without being read. So your when your name comes up, is your email being deleted straight away or is it being read because someone's excited to actually be hearing from you? Okay? Yeah. So I, I suppose a, a little thing here, um, the email we sent out this morning uh, went out to, to about 7,000 people um, just in, in Sydney and Melbourne and we saw that within 20 minutes that we actually already had nearly 4,000 people open the email in 20 wow. minutes and that's at, at 7 a.m. So that sort of says when someone sees our name or sees my name with an email marketing piece that hopefully they're actually interested in then seeing what that's about. So the, how does that end up coming up, coming sort of to the front? Well, it comes to the front by how you talk to people and how what it is that you actually write. So I'm very big on you should be talking when you write an email as if you're talking just to the one person. No different to, to you and I just having a, a general conversation. Um, when, you, when you make generalizations and statements and you're talking to people as a group, all of a sudden they go, well, hold on, you're not talking to me, I'm not important to you, so why should I bother reading from you? Um, and it's, it's really important, and, and I actually have somebody in my head um, I'm more than happy to, it's, it's Joe who's a personal trainer and I met Joe uh, probably four years ago and I know he's the ideal person when I write these emails that I should be talking to. He loves, he loves hearing um, about education, about training, about marketing insights, uh, he's fairly proactive in everything that he does. So I actually sit there and I go, hi Joe and I uh, hope you're having a great week. So it's, it's talking as if I would normally be talking to him in a conversation. Um, I've, we've had feedback, I've had feedback from people all the time who go, uh, Michael, you got me again. Uh, what do you mean? And they go, well, I ended up reading all your, the whole email and then I realised that you probably sent that to everybody and not just to me. And I think that's absolutely fantastic that someone felt that, they were, that we were talking purely just to them that they managed to read the whole email. So that's sort of the key there, is how do you get people to be able to go from subject line, yes, I'm interested, open, to read the whole thing, but most importantly, feel as if that you're actually speaking to them. I think, I think that's a, a really great point as well, mate, because you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of people out there who, who offer advice, information, consulting on how to write a killer subject line, how to write killer copy, how to write this, how to write that. And it sort of goes back to what Google used to do with regard to search engine optimization. That was, you know, you had to have all these killer keywords and things like that and it had to evoke certain emotions. But what you're saying is, uh, makes a whole lot of sense to me and that is to personalize it, to make it, make it, uh, address it to the individual and uh, when you do that, then it will it will automatically come across. I mean, I'm not discounting the the, 
the science, so called, you know, maybe it is a science, behind the killer subject line because we know that the subject line sells the opening of the email and the email sells whatever it is you're looking to, to, to offer. But um, I think when you personalize it, when you come across really authentic in a personal way, then people will automatically resonate with it and automatically want to uh, do more than if you just sort of, uh, as you say, go out in a group shotgun blast style and, 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 and well, it's not spam, you know, about, but really just spew all over them. Yeah, no, very true. Um, and, and it's very easy for somebody to be able to pick up the way you write, whether they should actually invest their time in the relationship with you, um, whether, whether we really believe this or not, really believe it. People buy from people they know, like, and trust, and, and people who give them customer experience. So um, as soon as you wreck that, it's very hard to get that back. Uh, it's a good old saying that you can do a, a great job for 100 people and you won't hear from any of them and you do a dud job for one person and you hear that person 100 times over. Um, and unfortunately, that's that's sort of the same. So I know every time we create an email marketing campaign, there's a few things that we're always sort of checking off to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Uh, the first one is I will see that the subject line is A, catchy, but B, relevant. I remember a few years back all the, the big ball billboards that went up that had um, it had sex, real huge letters, and then it was like a message from the maths department. And um, straight away, people go, well, hold on, well, you got me in, and now you're talking about maths. Well, you've just lost my trust forever. So that's sort of how you go. Well, make sure that in the end, um, what you're what you're promising that you're going to talk to them about is actually what you're going to talk to them about. Um, I always like to keep it informal, and that's just part of our character. And I think businesses should have, and every individual within the business should have a particular character that they're going to follow. Are you flexible, informal with your communication in that high hey first name, or are you always a D? Um, I always begin with, I hope you're having a great week, or I hope this finds you doing well because I'm generally interested that that's what is happening for people. Um, I always finish with have a great day, have a great weekend, have a great evening, speak soon, where other people might go, well, I'm always kind regards or I'm always regards or sincerely. And that's fine, but be consistent to what your, what your writing style is based on what your character is. Um, and, and they're things which I, a lot of people probably don't give the time to think about, but it's always actually picked up subconsciously and I get comments all the time where people will actually write back and say, thanks, Michael, you have a great day too. And something so simple, yet it's triggered something which gets them then to remember you. Right? And obviously, marketing, it's all about how do you get remembered and how do you get other people talking about you out there, which is the best way of free advertising. Yeah, I, I, I totally hear what you're saying. I, I have my own little sign-offs and I get that as well. People come back and say, oh, thank you so much. You have an outstanding day as well. And if there's someone in my network, um, uh, won't, won't drop names now, I think you know him as well. He, he quite often, um, well, actually yeah, 99% of the time, signs off with love from wherever he is in the world. And, you know, <laughs> most people look at that in the business letter and think that's pretty weird, someone saying love, you know, <laughs> um, especially guy to guy. Um, but that's just his style. And you know that you know that it's not, a, it's not a gimmick. It's just him being genuine who he is and he's just looking to spread the love. So, yeah, um, love that, mate. Yeah. No. So, so once you've got a subject line right, once you sort of understand your soft style, um, you've got to write your email in a conversational type of tone. So we're doing some, some email marketing right now for, for a, an online products group. And um, what, they're, what they're doing is pretty much just being able to showcase their products. That's their target audience also. Their target audience only really wants to hear from them when they can save 50, 60, 70% off. So you've got to match your email and your email tone to who are the people who are receiving it and what is it that they're expecting or wanting from you. So uh, when we said earlier, don't just shove sales messages down your throat. Well, if you're an online online store that only sells products and the only people who are signing up to receive things are signing up purely because they're wanting to be able to save money on more products, then that's what they're expecting. If you sent them just a, a, a nice little email, how's your day going, they're probably not going to respond to that. 
send them an email with a, a fifty dollar voucher and they can save thirty percent off the, the whole site. Well, they're probably going to be up, jumping up and down and really excited. So you've got to understand why you're writing it and who you're writing it for. Right? And and then finally, um, I I love using um, PSs and, and PPSs <laughs> uh, with, within an email because. We're all very busy. We're all we're all time poor. So what do we do? We literally read the subject line. We skim the first two lines, and then we go down to the PS. And so therefore, the PS literally should have just about some of your most important things that you want people to be able to take away from your email, because that's where they're going to skim to. So um, very big on having a PS, and, and sometimes even having a PPS. Just to, wow. to, if I had two important points that they needed to know, so that's sort of the structure of how I would be structuring sort of email campaigns. You've also always just got to keep going back to the simple question of what is the purpose of this campaign or, or this particular email, and what is the action I want people to take from it, and therefore the way I'm writing it is that going to achieve those two things. Okay. Um, if you always come from a, a mindset of how do I add value, I really care about our community, I'm trying to actually impart knowledge, uh, value, whatever it might be that your, your product or service offers onto our community, rather than I'm sending this because I hope I'm going to make 10 sales, then you're always going to do well with email marketing. Wow, mate, I've actually just learned something today as well with that PS and PPS because it's true. On long, especially on long web pages, but also on long emails, I, I read the top bit, I read the first couple of lines, and I just skim all the way to the bottom, and I read you know the last sign off, and if there's a PS or a PPS, I do read it as well. Never really thought about it. Got to do it. Thanks very much for that. What do you just just um, actually one last question because I wrote it down here, and then we just like to recap for everybody, get all those those tips in a row. I mean, everyone can rewind and watch this later on. But what do you uh, what do you think about uh, putting the you know a lot of people have adopted putting that you know re dot dot in the in the subject line as if it to make it look as if it's coming as a response to something else. Yeah. Um, for for the majority of businesses that'll be watching this, they're not internet marketers. And, and there's a big difference between being an internet marketer and being a business that deals with mum and dads and, and the general the general public, so to speak. Internet marketers write for other internet savvy people. Um, and therefore, their demographic and the way they write needs to be very different. You write like that to your, your average consumer um, if, if you're a business and you've lost them straight away. They, they don't understand that world and they don't need to understand that world either. Um, so to me, I'm sort of, I sort of sit on the fence on that because we play in the internet marketing space uh, with various products and helping people launch products and things like that. But we're also very much on the space of we talk to the average business owner who's got a panel beating shop or a carpet cleaning um, place in in the sort of the suburbs of Sydney. And if you did that to them, well, they'd be looking at you going, sorry, what on earth are you talking about? Delete before they even opened it. So there, there's a place to be tricky. However, don't be too tricky that in the end it shoots yourself in the foot. Yeah, I, I hear you because uh, I have to be. I have to admit, I actually uh, played in that space for a little while, just testing it out, but it just didn't feel right. You know, it didn't. It felt like you were trying to get one over on people to, you know, trick them into opening your email uh, when and, and, and thinking that you had a conversation about that subject line with them already. So, I very quickly stopped that practice. But I appreciate what you're saying there about internet marketing uh, uh, or internet marketers makes uh, makes a lot of sense. Cool. So, um, uh, do you want to do you want to um, Sort of round up and, and, and sort of compact everything into uh, into a bullet point list uh, for people. So they you know, one of the highlights they can they can uh, you know, take away, and then they can obviously just play this whole thing back when they need to uh, to get all the, the great value content that you just provided. Yeah, not a problem at all. So really, um, the first thing you got to determine is set a plan for your email marketing. How what's the length? of time in between each email and actually put it into the calendar. It's not a, I'll do it just because I've got nothing to do for the next hour, so therefore I'll send something out. It's actually something which is part of your marketing, it's planned, it's actually put into your marketing calendar. So work it out. Is it weekly, is it fortnightly, is it every three weeks, is it monthly? It shouldn't be any more than monthly. 
impact. So the person who's got absolutely no information, you can still do it monthly because you've got to stay front of mind. So that's step number one. You've got to work out your email marketing um, campaign calendar and actually schedule it. Um, then you've got to actually make sure that you've got conversational tone and that you're speaking to just one person when you're writing those emails. Now, yes, it's going out to, to tens or hundreds or thousands, but write it as if you're just speaking to that one person. Remember the subject line. How good your subject line determines how many people open your email. So you don't want to trick them in your subject line, but you want your subject line to be catchy enough that people go, oh, what's this about? And that they open it. Once they open it, then you need to be able to get their attention within sort of the first two lines, okay? Understand how do you write? Are you conversational laid back? Are you formal? But how you write the first time is how you need to write literally every time. So you need to understand that. Get their attention in the first two sort of lines or so. Then make sure that uh, obviously you provide them value in the body. No problem having call to actions. No problem trying to, to offer them something. But at the same time, always add value to, to their world. People who do that, they're going to get their emails open far more. And then when you sign off, always sign off with your PS or your PPS. Now, if you can structure your email like that, then you're going to, to be fine. Awesome. Amazing. Thanks very much for that, mate. Um, do, we want to, do we want to let people know what's coming up next week, Friday, 9 a.m. Sydney time uh, on, on Marketing Guru TV? Do we want to let them in on that or should we just uh, put it on the website later on? Um, I think we'll put it on the website later on, but I think at the same time, I think it's a great time if, if people um, have have something that they would really like to get information on, if that's something that they would like um, that they're having problems with at the moment. It might be how to use social media effectively. It might be how do I win the Google game? Can I win the Google game? It might be do I use search engine optimization versus pay per click marketing? It might be how to do a direct mail piece properly. It might be how to actually set up the next 30 day marketing plan. Um, whatever people have got, I think um, it's just simple. There will be an email address up on, on the uh, Marketing Guru TV page, which people can just email in and give their suggestion of what it is that they would like to learn. Because really, we're doing this for, for business owners who would like to be able to A, be part of the, the business community we're creating here, also would like to be able to grow their business. And, and the, the information and the value that we can add, that's what this is all about. So um, we'll, we'll talk about social media next week. If nobody has any real requests, and we see a common thing. But a lot of people to, to say, well, this is what I would like. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea, mate. Um, and indeed, firstly, there'll be an email address on the, on the Marketing Guru TV page. There are links on the Marketing Guru TV page, how you can uh, reach out to Michael and his team over at My Small Business Marketing Guru. And that actually is the domain name. It's my. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's uh, therefore easy to remember, I expect. My Small Business Marketing Guru dot com dot au. Um, and if you can't remember it, then just check on the page and it'll be there. Uh, and it, it, Michael has a whole bunch of information and his team over at uh, My Small Business Marketing Guru have a whole bunch of information on different websites. And you know, when, when, uh, when relevant, uh, when we're talking about those different topics, uh, you'll find on the page, uh, on the Marketing Guru TV page, you'll find links to those web websites and we'll provide you with those links also during the, uh, during the video. So uh, thanks um, to everyone who's watched. Michael, any closing thoughts? Marketing doesn't happen unless you make it happen, and it's a daily activity to help your business grow. Brilliant. Love it. Thanks very much for that, mate. Well, listen, um, again, thank you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, if you're watching this later on, you have some comments, you have some thoughts, uh, have some ideas, please email us, and uh, you have a great day. Michael, you have a fantastic day, mate. Can't wait to, uh, to see you again next week. And uh, well, actually, hopefully to see you next week. We'll figure that one out in the meantime. And uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks, Paul.